bro. The weather is so shit. <laughs> Man. There's no point going out. I don't want to go out anyways. I prefer to stay at home. Well, today anyways. I'm not always like this, but I just feel like staying home today because the weather is just horrendous. Just, man, it's terrible. <laughs> I might have made a big mistake moving down here in Tasmania because of the rain. I don't mind the cold. I don't mind when it's cold and it's sunny. But when it starts raining, it's... I don't know, I just feel so lazy. And you know what I just realized? I realized that I am so similar to my pet. <laughs> My pet is my sister, by the way. <laughs> I'm joking. My goldfish is... And I've noticed that in other people as well. Like, you are actually so similar to your pets. I went to Ryan's house today and his dog, Nala, is a split image of him. She also got curly hair. Because she was also very anxious and impatient. Always getting up into your face. That was a bit like him. He's... <laughs> he's like that sometimes. Like, he would blow up your phone. Um, just wondering where you are. Wondering about the plans. And I'll tell you why I think I am similar to my goldfishes. They are very confined, and yet they are very content with where they are. They don't adapt well to changes. What I mean by this is that they are not amphibious creatures. They live in water. You take away water, you take away their lives. And I feel like I am like that sometimes. I do not adapt well to changes. Sudden changes, I mean. Give them a thousand years, they might evolve into some mutants. <laughs> Amphibious, two-legged creatures. But until that day, they will be inside this box. They are very routine-oriented creatures. My fish especially. You do this, and they all swim to the surface. Yo. Yeah. Talking about pets, my sister is gonna adopt some cats soon, again. She's gonna be fostering some kittens, just like last time. And the reason why she's fostering them instead of adopting them fully and permanently is because she's very unpredictable. <laughs> Uh, she's a bit opposite to me in that she doesn't have a fixed schedule. She travels a lot for work, for holidays. Um, so she cannot have a permanent home. With fostering, you don't have to take full ownership of the cats. You don't have full liability. <clears throat> You take care of them for a while, and when they're old enough, you put them up for adoptions again. 
it's not a very full-on commitment. And the reason why she's doing this as well is that because I am here, if she needs to go somewhere, she's going to leave them here with me and I can look after them. I'm that sort of guy. <laughs> I'm very predictable. I am very reliable. I rarely change. Now, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I'll leave you to decide. <laughs> Being friends with me for that long. <coughs> I don't know, man. I don't think we ever own any of these animals. We're just their caretakers. I don't own these fishes. God owns these creatures. Taking ownership of them would be stealing from God. They are God's creatures. I'm merely looking after them. And the funny thing is, the more time I spend with them, the more I realize how similar we are. I just have this deep connection with these creatures. <clears throat> yeah, I know, I'm talking a lot of gibberish. You can say that. You can say that again. I'm not really making any sense, am I? <clears throat> you know, remember that guy that I told you about in primary school? The guy that I watched pee? We, we watched porn together. Um, we used to go on this website called Omegle. And if you look on my YouTube channel, the first video I made, I was on Omegle. And the thing, the thing that I really like about Omegle is that you get to talk to random strangers on the internet. Before all of these exhibitionists and these flashes start appearing on the website. It was actually a very cool and interesting platform. Um, one of my favorite things to do as a kid, I know I shouldn't be on that website now as a kid, but back then before all of these exhibitionists and people flashing the you know what's on there, I used to go there after school with my friend and it's so interesting. Every stranger, every single stranger, I think we have this unspoken social convention that because we are strangers, we can reveal as much of ourselves as we want. Um, we don't have this expectation that someone who is well acquainted to us would have um, what, what I mean by this is that you can say whatever the fuck you want you can reveal as much of yourself as you want and it, that makes it interesting uh, every single person that I've met on there it's just interesting to look at their background see where they are in life some of them in their bedroom some of them outside with friends um, a lot of teenagers, they are with friends, they are at a sleepover party, much like what I did with my friend back then. And some older people as well, some lonely souls who work from home. Um, they might be working and they just wanted to have that connection with another human being on this planet. So they turn on Omegle and there we were, ready to talk. I don't know, man. There's something about interacting with strangers that satisfies this need for intimacy. Because we are strangers, we are forced to explain everything that we do. And maybe that's how people understand us better. Um, you have no pressure to maintain this relationship. There's no commitment. So you able to say as much as you want without fear of oversharing. And a lot of people have told me 
while I was on there that they are depressed, the girlfriend broke up with them, um, they're feeling suicidal. I don't know, like when they know that you're a stranger and they uh, and, and you're not gonna judge them because you don't know the story. Um, people tend to open up to you. Am I oversharing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh. That's an interesting point you made there. <clears throat> yeah, I think the world would be a better place if people start to not be afraid of strangers. Um, start reaching out and making small interactions with the people around you. I think that would bring down a lot of these barriers um, in terms of discrimination, prejudice, because believe it or not, the more positive experiences you have with a group of people, the more positive you are likely to view everyone from that community as. So the more positive experiences I have with women, the more I'm likely to view them positively. And I think you should tell the other guys in your friend group, they start, they just need to start making interactions with the, the women in their lives. Um, yeah, your friend group especially. <laughs>